Hi everyone, Mike from Northern Ridge Designs here again. And in this video, I'm gonna share most of the process I went through to create six epoxy river charcuterie boards. I've made some river tables before, but this was the first attempt at making multiple boards at one time. I used two different brands of epoxy and two different finishes. As you can see here, the boards came out great, but I definitely made some mistakes along the way that affected efficiency. And I'll be sharing those with you as well. If you're planning on creating a river board, or even a few at once, hopefully you'll find this video helpful. Let's get started. Alright, we are working with some walnut here. Uh, we planed both sides, which turned out to be our first mistake. In the future, for efficiency reasons, I'm just going to plane one side, the side that will be going face down in the mold, because the whole charcuterie board ends up getting planed anyways once it's been poured. So here we are, sending it through, wasted a little bit of time here. Also make sure you welcome back Cousin Eddie making a reappearance cutting the boards into workable chunks. Now we thought we were gonna do smaller forms, but then we decided, hey, we'll just put all the boards together. So really, that was our second problem with efficiency. We should have just left the boards intact and ripped them down the center. Here we've made the form, used block it tape. Um, I'm mixing up some quick coat of epoxy to seal the edges. As you saw there, it was kind of like a brown color. It'd been affected by the UV. It was kind of some older epoxy I had. Uh, does not affect the epoxy whatsoever. You just wouldn't want to use it anywhere where you were going to be, um, you, know, you wanted the epoxy shown. I'm just using it to seal the edges. You will not see the epoxy at all, but again, it's still very strong. I'm using the quick coat to seal the edges as well as glue the pieces down to the, the uh, block it tape. Now it seems counterproductive that you want to glue them down, but they're going to be glued down well enough to hold once we do the uh, river pour but not so bad that I'm unable to release them from the form. So here we're mixing up a second batch for the other side. I'm gonna be doing six, as you can see here, the six different chunks, six different epoxy uh, river tables. On the left-hand side, we'll be doing stone coat countertop epoxy, and on the right side, we'll be doing total boat epoxy. So I'm using stone coat quick coat, though, to uh, seal both sets of river boards. Gluing them down, I'm gonna wait 24 hours, come back and sand the edges. Here we go, sanding the edges using 220. That's all you need to do, just rough them up a little bit. I'm gonna use the air gun to get that uh, dust that I created out of there. And then we'll be ready to pour our casting epoxy to make the rivers. Okay, as I said, we're using two different types of epoxy. Total Boat Thick Set. Uh, this was actually sent to me by Total Boat Epoxy, so thank you for sending that to me. Uh, I'm gonna try it out, see how it went. Uh, it's kind of an experimental thing for me. I've never used it before. I'm also using Stone Coat Casting Epoxy, which I have used in the past and works out really well. So starting out here with the Stone Coat, that is up first. We mixed in some Ocean Blue Metallic uh, Flakes to get our blue color. And I'm pouring a quarter inch at a time and then torching. I'd pour another quarter inch or so and torch. The board's overall just under three quarters of an inch thick. Now you can see the gaps along the edges. That was kind of a problem of me cutting these walnut boards into shorter lengths. Uh, again, I thought we were gonna use smaller forms. We ended up just doing the larger forms. So I'm having to fill those gaps ahead of time and use some epoxy back there because I know it's gonna leak through and end up on the edges of the board and would bring my river down. So I'm trying to fill those ahead of time and make sure we have everything filled up and it's not, I'm not gonna have any surprises when I come back 24 hours later and my river has shrunk down too shallow. So again, torching to make sure we get the bubbles out as we go. Had a little issue with the table not being totally level. Um, it wasn't quite perfect as you can see the epoxy starting to leak to one side. That's what happens when you don't have your table perfectly level. Um, to a certain extent it's going to be fine. 
Um, I'm trying to over pour a little bit in the river because as the epoxy cures, it is going to shrink a little bit, this casting epoxy. So if you're quite a ways under the edge and then you let it cure, you're going to be even shallower. So I'm trying to get it right up to the edge. I'm just using a paint stick to kind of move it around. You can see some swirls starting to form, which is nice. It's going to be a great look. But in the end, after 24 hours or so, it's going to change. Here we're pouring our total boat epoxy. We used ocean blue metallic and tropical turquoise to make these two colors. And as we're pouring here, you can see that they're going to meet up in the middle. It's really neat. Uh, I've never done this before with two different colors. So we're just kind of pouring against each other and talking as far as you know who needs to pour harder to try to keep that line in the middle. We were thinking we'd have one blue board, one green board, and then one board that was kind of a mixture of the two. Now I did some miscalculating here. When I converted the cubic inches to ounces, I thought I had enough epoxy, but it turned out the green board on the left was a little longer than the blue board on the right. So when I split the epoxy in half, I ended up not having quite enough green. And as you're gonna see towards the end here, uh, the blue sort of starts to spill over towards the green side on the left. Here I'm just kind of playing around, seeing what happens. This is kind of a look, an overview of the epoxy once it has moved all around. We can see the blue has kind of made its all the way down to the green. Here I'm pulling the forms off. It really popped out pretty easily, both types, the total boat epoxy as well as the stone coat countertop epoxy. I'm just going to rough cut these, get them pretty close so that they're a little more manageable so I can send them through the planer. So this 13-inch uh, planer makes pretty quick work of the wooden epoxy. Then I'm going to buzz off the edges using the table saw, clean those up start to make something that's pretty square. Just shaving off that excess epoxy that I had poured on the um, in the forms. Once I've done that, then I can get a nice square cut on the miter saw. Okay, so you can see the planar lines left behind there. So I'm just using 60 grit sandpaper to one, knock out those lines and two, try to reveal any sort of flaw that needs to be filled, any sort of hole or crack. Um, first, I'm going to try to attack those with some epoxy. I'm gonna mix up some quick coat along with some black dye and use that to fill some of the voids. So here we're using that same stone coat countertop quick coat epoxy that I used to seal the edges before we put them into the mold. And I'm just adding literally two drops of black dye. This stuff goes a long ways. I'll put the uh, a link to it in the description. And I'm gonna use that to fill all these little voids, these little worm holes and bug holes and that sort of thing in the, that naturally occurred in the wood. Now the problem here is you can't get this stuff very thin. So it will fill the void, but you're left with a lot of excess that needs to be sanded off. Or in my case, I'm gonna use a grinding wheel to get the big chunks off. Luckily, I'm a bad welder, so I'm pretty good with the grinder and I'm pretty surgical there. So I'm able to get real close to the wood without dishing out the wood at all. To remove those grinder lines, just hit it again with some 60 grit sandpaper. Now here I found this new product to me, which just works awesome. Starbond medium thick black filler thin enough that it goes in the little nooks and crannies and then you hit it with the accelerator and literally within like 10 seconds it's rock hard and you can sand it. So that was a game changer and I used that instead of the epoxy for the rest of the holes. Here I'm going to sand um, my way up to 220 and I'm not going to go past 220 which will probably offend some people but really for what I'm doing here um, I'm going to do two types of finishes. One is an oil and wax as you can see me putting in here. I'm using a white scotch bright to buff that in. And I'm also going to use Rubio Mono Coat, which they don't even suggest going up to 220 for Rubio. I wanted to do both the Total Boat Epoxy as well as the Stone Coat Epoxy charcuterie boards um, with different finishes and see how it, it turned out. So here we're getting a look at the oil and wax buffed in with a white Scotch Brite. I'm very happy with how it went. Plus, going up to just 220, these boards are going to be used. So if I were to to try to get up to like a, a 2,000 or 3,000 or 4,000 grit 
sanding. It's just, I don't think it's gonna hold up that long, but it's experimentation. So I'm trying to learn as we go. So here we have the total boat, thick set epoxy uh, river boards and mixing up some Rubio mono coat. This stuff is a three to one. I'm putting in the, uh, the base and then the hardener, which is the clear stuff. Okay, I'm going to mix this stuff up really well. You don't need a lot of this. It goes a long ways. A little bit goes a long ways. So as you can see there, I just had like maybe a couple ounces to do both sides of all three boards. And this is where I made my third mistake and decided to use the buffing wheel on these small little projects and ruined a shirt and flung Rubio Monaco everywhere. So I'd used it in the past and I just hand buffed it. I don't know what I was thinking. I should have just hand buffed it with the white uh, scotch bright. Anyways, we got them done and it turned into a beautiful finish. Uh, I like it probably a little more than the just oil and wax. But I guess in the end for the for the customer, they're gonna be able to recoat with the same oil and wax anytime they want that I used. Um, with the Rubio mono coat, once it starts to wear off, that's not really something a typical homeowner is going to uh, probably reapply. So, although it is a much tougher product. So here we're looking at the stone coat countertop epoxy uh, boards finished with the butcher block oil and wax. And they just turned out very, very bright blue. I think the color pops really well. And then one final look at both boards side by side. Not a ton of difference between the finish. I think both epoxies uh, worked very well. The total boat epoxy and the stone coat countertop epoxy. I would use total boat epoxy again. It was pretty user friendly. It was a little thinner, I think, than the stone coat countertop, but really uh, I don't think that matters. In fact, it might even be better because it's able to get into the little grooves a little easier. So the colors are just awesome. I think I ended up with a little more character out of the epoxy once it cured. I didn't swirl that, that total boat epoxy that you're seeing there. It just naturally happened that way. All right, hopefully you found this video helpful. Make sure you check us out on Instagram, Facebook, northernridgedesigns.com. If you have any questions or comments, leave those below. I love reading through those. Don't forget to pound that subscribe button and hit that little notification bell so that you are up to date on any new videos that we release. Thanks for watching.